happy day. This is Dr. Mary Ann DiOrio, novelist and life coach, welcoming you to another episode of the Winning with the Word podcast. Today is Monday, February 26, 2024, and we are going to continue our series on faith, the series we began last week. Last time, if you heard the uh, podcast, you remember that we talked about what faith is not and what faith is. And we likened faith to a receipt that Jesus has given us to redeem all that he died on the cross and rose from the dead to give us. Today, we're going to be discussing the two kinds of faith, natural faith and supernatural faith. Natural faith is the Thomas kind of faith. If you remember in the Bible in John chapter 20, the apostle Thomas was not present the first time Jesus appeared to the disciples after his resurrection. So when the disciples told Thomas that they had seen Jesus and had seen the scars in his hands and feet, Thomas did not believe them. Basically, he said, I won't believe it until I see it for myself. Thomas's kind of faith is what a lot of us misinterpret as real supernatural faith, but it is only natural faith. What does that mean? Natural faith is faith that is dependent on the physical senses. It's based only on what our physical senses tell us. We have five physical senses, sight, hearing, touch, taste, and smell. So natural faith is based on those five senses. Natural faith is also head faith. It pertains to the mind, not to the spirit. Remember, we said that man is made up of three parts, spirit, soul, and body. We are made in God's image. God is a triune being, a three-part being, and so are we. Our spirit is who we are at the core. Our soul is comprised of our mind, our will, and our emotions, and our body is our earth suit. The body and the soul together are what the Bible refers to as the flesh. The spirit is of another dimension. It is of the supernatural realm. So when we base our faith only on our five senses, we have what is called head faith, which is mental assent or agreement. But it is not faith of the spirit, which is supernatural strength. Well, you know, interestingly, even devils have head faith. In James chapter 2, verse 19, the Bible says this, You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. So to have head faith, <clears throat> excuse me, is simply to have the same kind of faith the demons have. They know that there's a God. They believe in God but they cannot receive his promises. Well, it is the same with us. Now, head faith, natural faith says this, I'll believe it when I see it. Seeing is believing. Head faith or natural faith is based on experience, on circumstances, on the senses. It's based on what the senses tell us. If we see a medical report and we believe what it says, if it's a contrary to God's word, then natural faith believes the medical report. Natural faith takes the pain and believes that it is the truth, where in reality it is a fact. And last week I discussed a little bit about the difference between truth and fact. So Thomas here in our passage in John 20 says that he would not believe that Jesus had actually appeared to the disciples until he, Thomas, could touch Jesus himself and see the nail prints in his hands. What about you? Are you saying things like, I'll know I'm healed when my blood tests come back normal, or I'll know I'm healed when the pain is gone? How about this? 
When the money comes in to pay the rent, I will believe that God supplies my need. Well, dear brother or sister in Christ, if this is what you're thinking, you will never get healed and you will never get your rent paid. Why not? Because you are putting the cart before the horse. The world says seeing is believing. Natural faith says seeing is believing. But God says believing is seeing. So in the supernatural realm, we have to believe before we receive. In fact, we won't receive if we don't believe first. So believe first and then you will see. This is supernatural faith. This is what Abraham did. Abraham is our example of supernatural faith. Abraham believed based solely on God's word, not based on feelings or circumstances or in physical senses. Abraham's belief was based on what God said, not on what he felt in his body. In the natural, it was impossible for him and Sarah to have a child at their age. Yet God had told Abraham that he and Sarah would have a child. Well, that statement, that promise was enough for Abraham. It didn't matter that he was 100 years old and Sarah was 90. It didn't matter that their bodies in the natural could no longer produce and bear children. All of that did not matter to Abraham. Yes, it was fact. It was a fact that Abraham was 100. It was a fact that Abraham was 90. It was a fact that Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. It was a fact that Abraham was an impotent old man. But Abraham had real faith. Real faith, supernatural faith, believes what God said just because God said it. God's word is enough for supernatural faith. Smith Wigglesworth, who was a giant in the faith a couple of hundred years ago, said this, I am not moved by what I see. I am not moved by what I feel. I am moved by what I believe. And that principle is true for all of us. You see, Smith Wigglesworth believed that God's word is true and forever settled in heaven. He believed truth over fact. Now, remember last week, and I'll review this briefly because I think it might help some of you. There is a huge difference between truth and fact. Now, there are times when fact and truth agree, but rarely in the natural world. So let's say, let's go back to our medical example. Let's say you get a blood test back and the results are really bad in the natural. Well, that is a fact. We don't deny the blood tests. We don't deny what the analyst saw under the microscope. We don't deny the negative report, but we choose not to believe it or to accept it as truth. Why? Because truth, which is the Bible, said that you were healed by the stripes of Jesus. It was past. Jesus healed you when he shed his blood on the cross. He healed you when he took the stripes on his back. You see, in the death and resurrection of Christ, he gave us two specific things. He gave us salvation for the forgiveness of our sins, and he gave us healing for our body and our soul. Both of those things are wrapped up in the atonement. Both of them are represented in Holy Communion. The bread represents the body of Christ that was broken for us. The body of Christ that took our sickness in exchange for his health. And the blood represents the forgiveness of our sins. What we needed for our spirits and our healing of 
the sin nature. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, when we are born again, we receive this new nature of Jesus Christ inside of us. This is what the Bible means when it says that we become new creatures. So Abraham's belief was based on what God said, not on what he felt or saw in his body. In the natural, it was impossible for him and Sarah to have a child. But Abraham did not focus on the fact. He focused on the truth, which was God's promise to him. And the Bible tells us that God cannot lie. So Abraham had supernatural faith, real faith, supernatural faith believes what God said just because God said it. Now, this is not easy to do because the flesh, meaning the body and the soul, scream at us. It is especially not easy when there's physical pain involved. If you've ever had a toothache, you know that throbbing pain is constant and you can think of nothing else but how to relieve it. So to live according to the senses is carnally minded. It's living according to the flesh. And if we live that way, and if we believe only in the natural with our natural faith, we will not receive from God. We will not receive his promises because we do not have supernatural faith, which is the only kind of faith that can receive the blessings that God has promised us. To live according to the Spirit, then, is to be spiritually minded. In Romans chapter 8, verse 6, we read, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Okay, you may be thinking now, how do I believe? I thought I believed, but now I'm wondering. Well, let me just point out a couple of things that will help you. Believing has nothing to do with a feeling. Believing has everything to do with a decision. We choose to believe. Just as we choose to love and we choose to forgive. So we do not feel belief or faith. We choose it. Believe is an action verb. It means to take hold of, to grab or to grasp. Believing then is an act of the will, not a feeling. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 17, the Bible says, Whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. In other words, whosoever chooses, whoever chooses to take the water of life can take it freely. So supernatural faith then is believing that God's word is true all the time, no matter what the circumstances look like and no matter what I feel like. So then how do you believe before you see? You decide to. It's as simple as that. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 tells us, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Sight is a physical sense, a natural sense. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27 says, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. In other words, our spirit is to be controlled by our or our, our body, excuse me, is to be controlled by our spirit. The I in this verse, but I keep under my body. That's the spirit. My spirit is in charge of my body and my soul. Your body is not the real you. It's just your earth suit. It's like putting on a coat. That's not the real you. The real you is inside the coat. Okay? So to be controlled by your feelings is to put your body first. Remember this. Feeling is the voice of the body. It is the voice of natural faith. Reasoning is the voice of the mind. It is also the voice of natural faith or mental assent. But conscience is the voice of the spirit. We are to be controlled by our spirit, which is under the control of the Holy Spirit. This is what it means to walk by faith, to be spiritually minded. Now, in closing, let me point this out. This kind of faith, the supernatural faith, is available only to born-again believers. What is a born-again believer? A born-again believer is a person who accepts Jesus Christ as his Savior and Lord and recognizes that Jesus is the only one who can save him.
If you have done this, then you are born again. If you have not, I invite you to do it right now with me. Just pray this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I choose to repent of my sin and to turn away from it. And I choose now to receive you as my Savior and my Lord. Make of me what you created me to be. I acknowledge that you are the Lord of my life. And I thank you for forgiving me. I receive all that you died to give me. In your name I pray. Amen. If you sincerely prayed this prayer with me from your heart, then you are now a child of God and you are entitled to every blessing that he has promised you in the Bible. I ask now and urge you to continue walking in Christ. Read your Bible every day. Find a good church. Ask Jesus to lead you to the church of his choice for you, where you can be around other believers who will help you to grow in him. So remember, supernatural faith decides to believe before it sees. Natural faith has to see in order to believe. So let's not be like Thomas. <laughs> let's not say, I won't believe it till I see it. Let's be like Abraham who said, Lord, I believe even though I do not yet see. Next week, Lord willing, we will be talking about how to obtain and develop faith that will help you to receive all that Jesus Christ died to give you. I want you to know before I close that Jesus loves you just as you are and just where you are, and that he will help you to keep on winning with the word. And please share this podcast with others who may be in need of knowing more about faith and how to receive Jesus Christ as Savior. God loves you, dear friend. You have a wonderful, blessed day.